I'm, I'm just testing it right now. You're just testing it? Yeah. Anybody do that? I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm going to do You know what Vlogmas is? Vlogmas? Vlogmas. Vlogmas. Where you vlog every day in December leading up to Christmas. Let me take this mask off. On my way to getting my second exchange transfusion. And Carl should be somewhere running behind me. Look at him. Look at him. Yes, we're running late again. <laughs> but, but I believe we'll make it on time. We'll make it on time. We gonna make it on time. Yeah, go get that. Go get that. Run! Don't hurt yourself, though. Okay, anyway. Since I have some time... Good morning! Oh, good morning! Welcome to the vlog. This is Vlogmas Day 14, y'all. I'm gonna stand under this little thing because I feel like it's blocking the wind a little bit. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel for those of you who have been watching. Oh my god, my arm is killing me. Oh. My name is Christelle Solomon. I am a medical student in the United States and I live with sickle cell disease. Not like my roommate live with. I, I have sickle cell disease. <laughs> I realize that sounds kind of weird. Anyway, so I am currently on a medical leave of absence because I am in the process of getting a stem cell transplant wow so today as part of the stem cell transplant i am getting or the stem cell transplant process i am getting my second exchange blood transfusion so i'm really excited for that uh for those of you who don't know i don't know if i want to get into a whole explanation right now because i feel like i'm going to be interrupted yeah yeah, let's save the explanation for when I get back and my hands are cold and my arms are tired. So let's do that. I will see y'all probably in like four or five hours. All right. I don't think it's on there. It? Okay. <laughs> I got Carl behind the camera doing the photography. Uh, so right now, oh no, it's coming off. So right now I have these I know this looks like one of the kids called it cream cheese filling which is kind of adorable but this is sort of the topical ointment that they put that makes the skin a little bit numb when they use ultrasound sometimes they use deeper veins because my veins aren't that great and so they add a little topical numbing so that it doesn't hurt as much so I appreciate that I thought this one's totally coming off but so yes this is step one starting the numbing process and then I'll show you as they use the ultrasound to pick veins and then the IV going in.
taping it, okay? Um, I can, or it's like, yeah, yeah, transfusion was but I actually didn't get a chance to I am not sure how I'm going to put these clips together this is definitely going to be one of those one take wonders right here because I really don't feel like editing I have my notes uh, in front of me just so I don't forget what I was going to say and I can hit on all the important points and try to keep it as concise as possible because you know big girl can ramble so also, this is green tea, um, oh, green tea, it's decaf, um, and I have like a little milk foam in there, which is delicious. If you hear some background like buzzing noise, that is the heater in my room. I thought I was going to turn it off for the video, but I'm just not. It's cold, and I'm already in a lot of pain, so I'm really not trying to make it worse. So. The heater is staying on. I'm so sorry if you can hear it, but hopefully I'm projecting enough so that you can uh, hear the words that I'm saying. So, I don't know if I said this yesterday. I should have probably washed it over. I don't think I did. Anyway, so as part of my transplant process, I need to get three exchange transfusions. And yesterday I got my second exchange transfusion out of three. So, da -da 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 this one was super exciting because Carl actually came with me. The first one I got by myself and also my other Adacfe infusions, I went by myself. But yesterday I went with Carl, which was so nice. He had to get his veins assessed because he's also going to undergo a similar procedure when they collect the stem cells from his blood. And so that's why they had to get his veins assessed. And he also had to get labs done as part of the process just to make sure we are indeed a match and to check his sickle cell status and all that good stuff so that's what happened so briefly let's get into what is an exchange transfusion actually so it's a type of blood transfusion that undergoes or not undergoes that involves a specific process called apheresis and apheresis is a medical term that is used to describe the process of removing components from the blood. And so what happens is you get two IVs that are placed, one in each arm. If you have a port or a central line, you can do it from there, um, but usually it's two IVs if you don't have that. One IV is placed and that is where the blood will be sort of taken out of your body. So the blood is taken out of your body through one IV and it gets processed through this apheresis machine, which is basically a big centrifuge. And a centrifuge is a machine that spins at a specific speed that can help you pull out 
different parts of the solution that you put in there. So for me, because I have sickle cell disease and sickle cell is a disease of red blood cells, what they're doing in my case is spinning down the blood so that it's settled, it causes all the red blood cells to settle and that way it's taking out my sickled red blood cells. So blood leaves my arm, goes into the centrifuge, spins, settles the red blood cells, and then the red, not the red blood cells, then the blood gets sent through the machine again and back into my arm on this side. And so this is the blood going out, this is the blood coming in. So obviously you don't wanna just like pull my blood out and never give it back to me. You just wanna pull out the specific component that you're interested in. So after the red blood cells get taken out of my blood, the blood gets returned back to me. And then also within this arm, I'm also receiving fresh blood from people who donate their blood, which thank you to those, to those of you who donate blood products or plasma or um, stem cells, bone marrow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. So I received the blood, my blood, and the donor blood from into this arm. So, yeah, let's see, let's see. What else do I need to say? I think that was pretty much it. And so the end result of this exchange transfusion is that I have my blood but not as many of my red blood cells. And then I receive new people's blood and their red blood cells so that now I have a higher proportion of red blood cells in my body that are normal and have normal hemoglobin instead of being sickled. And after that, that's pretty much <laughs> the end of the process. It takes a long time to set up but way less time to actually get the transfusion it's I would say like an hour and a half to get the actual blood and it takes about an hour and a half to two hours to set up because they have to numb my arm a little bit in a place that they're gonna put the IV and then they have to assess for the veins and they put the IVs in and they have to check all the blood products to see like they have this very specific checking process where it involves two nurses, or two nurses. One of them is reading off the blood packet, the other one is reading off of something else and they're entering it into the uh, electronic medical records. And so it's a very long process to set up, but it's for my safety, which is great and I really appreciate it. And there are just a lot of moving parts. And it's very finicky if you move your arm just a little bit or the, vein starts spasming or the catheter like kinks just a little bit the machine like makes this cute little noise but it's like constantly beeping and the nurse is like constantly trying to troubleshoot and figure out okay like should I move the catheter in or out of the vein and should I add blood pressure cuff maybe I should readjust the arm it's so involved and it's just amazing how these nurses like <laughs> know how to work this machine and this process because it is not it sounds simple in theory and for me as a patient i'm just sitting there but it's very involved for them so bless my nurses so yeah what do i need to do to prepare for the exchange transfusion is just as important as the transfusion itself so because i have really small veins and also my veins have been used a lot because I've been hospitalized so many times. There's lots of bruising and scar tissue around the veins and also the veins spasm a lot because they are just like, don't touch me. Like, I don't, I don't want this needle here. I don't want this catheter here. And so in order to help with that, I need to drink lots of water. So the couple days leading up to the transfusion I typically three to four days I try I will drink four of these bottles and this is 40 ounces so four times four is 16 so 160 ow, 160 ounces of water I try to aim for that for a couple of days leading up to the transfusion and that's how I prepare for it and let's see what else do I have to talk about oh yeah I just wanted to give you an update 
on how I'm feeling after the transfusion. So yesterday I was in a lot of pain, which is why I ended up, ended up not recording after I got home. It was a much longer day than I anticipated. And so after the transfusion, uh, since it's a day hospital, which is something I've, nev I, I've never had, I'm not used to that, they were able to give me some medication while I was there. So before the transfusion, I got some Tylenol and then t a little bit of Toradol. And then after the transfusion, since I was still not feeling well, I got um, some more drugs. Uh, it's, I, I, I hesitate to say these things because you know, I don't. I don't know why I hesitate. I think. I think I do know why I hesitate. It's because I'm. I've just become so accustomed to people, and by people I mean healthcare workers, accusing me of <laughs> things that are not true about me. That I feel weird talking about this, even though it's totally normal part of having sickle cell. Is receiving stronger medications, and that's just the reality of it. And. You know, I haven't taken pain meds in, I would say, since like September. I haven't had any pain meds because it, they just weren't helping me. And I figured, why bother taking all these strong medications if they're going to make me feel like trash and not make me feel better. So, yeah. So anyway, so I say all this to say, after I got the transfusion, they gave me a couple bolses of Dilaudid to see if that would help bring my pain down, which it did take the edge off the pain, like this much, but I was still feeling pretty terrible. And so I went home, I picked up a lot of my medication. I had run out of my hydroxyurea, my folic acid, like all my daily pain meds. I, had, ugh, I keep saying pain meds, all my daily medication. <laughs> hydroxyurea is not a pain med. I, ran out of so I got refills for that and by the time I got home I just really was feeling trash uh, my doctors helped me to think of a new plan they're like maybe you should try some lidocaine so um, I tried some lidocaine last night and sorry I'm starting to get distracted I, I had some lidocaine last I tried some lidocaine last night and then I also started um i took some naproxen and i took a little bit of dilaudid like right before bed and i just was feeling really terrible i'm not gonna lie like usually i don't know it was just cold in the infusion center like i could not i just was so cold and i needed to have short sleeves on to get access to my veins and I think that I think I was cold from that and for some reason I was just so much colder this time than I was last time and I don't think that helped and then also for the transfusion I had to like press on this stress ball in order to help my veins to keep my veins from spasming and I think that took a lot out of me too and so uh, I feel pretty terrible and I felt pretty terrible after the transfusion, but I don't think it was because of the transfusion. Like, everything went pretty smoothly with the transfusion. The nurse got the IV in on one try on both arms, and like everything went well in terms of the transfusion. I think it was just, you know, my sickle cell pain not really you know, cooperating with me yesterday. I don't, I, I don't think me feeling terrible had much to do with the transfusion um, I think it was mainly the environment and I was already in pain and so I think the combination of those two kind of set up for a not so great day afterwards today I still feel pretty terrible so yeah <laughs> anyway <clears throat> gosh Anyway, I am going to end this vlog here. This will count still as Vlogmas Day 14, I believe. And I will probably give some more updates about the transfusion after maybe a couple days from now. So I can let you know.
how I feel post transfusion. Last transfusion, I did feel better a couple days after the transfusion, so I'm hoping that happens this time as well. But anywho, I'm gonna stop here because I feel myself kind of like getting distracted. And like, yeah, I still have a lot of feelings and emotions to process in terms of how this year has gone health-wise and also my experience with the healthcare field. Like, to be honest, I have been traumatized <laughs> by medicine this year. And, you know, even just talking about the medications that I received yesterday, like, ugh, like I just don't feel good about it. And they ask me like, oh, what? what do you want and it's just like I'm not used to being asked what works for me and what do I want because for so many years I would say this is what works for me this is what I want and I would have people tell me like that can't be right like you're totally wrong or like there's no way we're going to give you that we're just going to do this instead and so yeah I think yeah this is not how I expected this vlog to turn out or this part of the vlog to turn out. But since this is a one take wonder, it's gonna stay in here. <laughs> I don't I don't know if these are really wonders, but they are honest and I mean you get to just see me the way I am in all my flaws and blunders and whatnot. So yeah. Yeah, I didn't mean to end it on this note, but I just can't help it when I brought that part of the conversation up. But anyway, I hope you learned a lot about exchange transfusion. I'll definitely bring you along with me to my next transfusion and show you maybe a different part of the transfusion process. And yeah, I hope you're well. And I appreciate that you're here watching this video and keeping up with me and sending me kind words of encouragement. So I really do appreciate it. And yeah, come back if you want to hear more about sickle cell disease, if you want to hear more about my faith, my personal growth, medicine, and advocacy. So, anywho, I will talk to y'all later. Doodles!